Hi, and welcome to Fiber Town. This is episode 93. It is December 26th, 2014. I'm Emily. I'm Gina Fools on Ravelry and Fiber Town with an RE on my blog at blogspot.com. And on Instagram, that's pretty much it. I'm here with Alice today. We've just had a walk in the woods, the two of us. It was lovely. She likes she does very well off leash in the woods. Um, she's very concerned about sticking close to me. But she goes off a little bit on her own and she goes in the creek and uh, there she is. Here's my little Tuffy. So we are here in front of the tree, which all my French friends make fun of. Ooh, Christmas tree, the American Christmas tree is so ugly. And I revel in its ugliness. And I'm, yes, I'm making fun of my French friends. Um, see that right there? I made that in the Girl Scouts. It has glitter. It's a styrofoam ball that says Noel in glitter. Crafting this started early. Oh, that, I think, has my son's picture on it. Ooh, that one I've had forever, that angel. Um, anyway, you'll notice all of the red balls are right on this side of the tree. <laughs> it's because the males in our house decorate the tree. And the smallest male, you might see later on the podcast to show off his, his Christmas gift, the smallest male decided... All of those red balls were going to go right there. Pretty much on that side. So, hello and welcome. I hope, I hope you're having a jolly holiday. And we are. And it's been very low-key and very nice. If you want to give me a present and you haven't already given me an iTunes review, I would love for you to do that. I really appreciate um, those reviews. And I haven't had one in months. Excuse me, this not my usual podcasting place, and Alice is crowding me. So the pattern sale is has been going well. Um, all of my patterns, Fiber Town Designs, are 25% off until the 6th of January. So go and take a look, take advantage, give a friend a pattern if you want to. And I need to say a couple of thank yous. Because opening my mailbox every day has been the happiest thing um, this, these past few weeks. So let me show you what I have found in my mailbox. I hope I'm not leaving anyone out. I don't think I am. Okay, Patricia and her family from Medusel sent me a lovely card. I don't have a photo of them picking their Christmas tree. But her daughter Charlotte made me a wool dolly, which is going to go back on my tree now. I think this is some Romney from their sheep. Adorable pipe cleaners, a big, um, a wooden bead. It's like a wool angel. Isn't she pretty? And her tips, the tips of her skirt are dyed blue. I love her, and she looks charming on the tree. So she will go back there. Um, Seashore Sharon sent me a handmade card. It's lovely. How cute is that? Looks like a hand stamped card, possibly. And she made this adorable tiny calendar. Is that Mary Inglebright, the, the illustrator? Teeny tiny calendar, and I will maybe attach this somewhere on my computer. Um, so thank you so much to both of you. I also got a card from Marlisha and Talia. How cute is that? This is like a picture that's been made into artwork. They have the um, Pen, Hook, and Needles podcast. And then I got um, three packages, and the first one was from um, Carly, and I'm going to look at her Ravatar, what is it again? Oh gosh. Eve Amlizia. It was one, a Ravatar I couldn't pronounce a few weeks ago. She sent me a beautiful card with her beautiful daughter, as well as mm, this candle, it smells really delicious. It's um, a candle from a candle maker in her hometown, or where she lives. It's Lux, luxfragrances.com. And it's really gorgeous. I love the acorn. It's just beautiful. I can't remember. A wild currant and pomegranate. Gorgeous Lux fragrances. Um, oh, and she sent me this ornament too, which is going to go back on my tree. And it's this fuzzy, really plush, like a, 
blue clay cotton almost. So soft and I love it. And I love having handmade ornaments on my tree and I really want to get a small tree and put ornaments on it and have an ornament tree somewhere, a knitted ornament tree. And the last, well, the second to last package I received was from Sarah Pomegranate, who has yarns at Ian Hu. And <laughs> there's a batik print of llamas. How awesome. Batik, llamas, they don't seem to really, you know, on the surface you wouldn't think of the two going together, but they totally work. <laughs> and she sent a lovely card. Sarah is really, really lovely. She sent me a luxury lotion bar from Spinner's End Farm in Michigan. This is sweet orange. Mmm, that's great. And then I had to open these up. These are Cosmic Wonder Worms um, for meditative spinning and the content there is Shetland, Merino, Coriadale, and Surrey Alpaca. Take a look. How cute. You can take one out because the colors are weird. Um, I think these, these look like they were made on a blending board. I don't know if Sarah made them. Or maybe this might be the farm that her cousin owns, or the shop um, in Michigan. These will be fun. I haven't, I have yet to spin them, um, spin them from right here. Ooh, they draft out pretty nicely too. So these will be fun to spin. Oh, yes, they will. So Cosmic Wonder Worms. This one has a lot of orange in it. Love that. Oranges and roses. Really beautiful. It reminds me actually of my hand spun that I made into um, Another Door Opens, which was Sarah's design. Now today, I got a package. <laughs> and this was totally, I mean, these were all very unexpected. And I am so thank you guys. And I'm, I love it. I love getting gifts, and these are just wonderful. Um, you know, you've talked about, I have talked about my ineptness at felting. And yes, I'm taking something off my feet <laughs> as we speak. I can't felt. Wet felt. It's like a can of worms. It's going to be problematic for me. There's just something in my mojo that doesn't allow it. So imagine my surprise, and I briefly considered making myself felted slippers a few months ago, and then I was like, wake up, no, it's never going to work. Janice Ficker of the Carolina Girls podcast, she made me a pair of felted French press slippers. They're really more of a green, they look blue here, but they're more of a green. They fit perfectly. No, I can't really read that. Does that say Emily? Looks like it might. I love them. I love them. They fit like a glove. What? She is, you know, she doesn't have my feet. She can make me a pair of felted slippers and they fit me. I make a pair of felted slippers. One's going to maybe be fit me and the other one will fit Alice. So these are going back. They are super cozy. They're super wonderful and... Thank you. Oh, I forgot to bring the, she had a little handmade thing that said, um, hand knit with, for you, but with love by Janice. I get to meet Janice in real life in a few months in the, at the Virginia Beach yarn getaway. And, uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I'll bring these with me so I can walk around the hotel in them. Because that'll be classy. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's all the thank yous. Super fun. All right, um, I have FOs, I have works in progress, I have spinning, I have acquisitions, and then I have some randomy kind of stuff. Not an Ask Fiber Town, but yeah. <coughs> Let me send a text to the other room really quickly. I got a new phone for Christmas. That was my one and only Christmas gift, and it was desperately needed. So my son, Oliver, who is seven, he will be coming... Oh, hang on. That's weird. Okay. Ooh. Sorry. He will be coming to share with you his handmade Christmas gift. He wanted to be on the podcast. And it makes sense because this was from the Elizabeth Green Musselman book, Kung Fu Knits, 
that he helped me review back in maybe September. You ready? Okay. So here he is. He wants to show you. You say hi. Hi. So what did you, what was your favorite Christmas present? He said this was his favorite. The, the nunchuck for mom, my mom made me. Can you show them? Alice. Alice was uh, having a nunchuck battle with Oliver. Here. Alicia. <laughs> Don't hurt her. Don't hurt her. No, she's not going to fight. She's having a nap. So they're pretty cool, eh? Do a spin for us. Like a, you know, like spin them in the air kind of thing. They have been used quite a bit already, and they're pretty awesome. Do you like them? Yeah. See? Thank you, Boo. Go back and play. Okay. All right, see you later. Um, so these are the Nunchucks by uh, Elizabeth Green Musselman, and they were very easy to make. Um, I messed up on one part just because I didn't read the directions. There was nothing wrong with directions. The Nunchucks themselves turned out fab because they've been... This is like a lamb's pride bulky, and I think I used a size five or six. I did not read the directions for the middle part. I used a jewelry wire. You can see it's very stretchy and it's secure. It's secured into the bottom. But I didn't somehow skipped over the directions that talk about how to deal with that, you know, covering the, the wire and yarn. And so I just kind of tried to crochet some in there later. No. They came out as soon as he started to really um, go to town with them. But you know what? They're so functional. They're still functional. And I'm like, nobody sees. Just hold it right there. See, I'm going to hurt myself. My husband's really good with them. I just hit myself in the head. But he loves them. Loves them. So I would make them again. I think they're pretty awesome. Alrighty. So... Other FOs I have, I made Azuzu's petals for my daughter. She doesn't seem too impressed with it, because she's 12. Yeah, but here it is. It's out of um, Freya hand paint. Let's see if I can get a better. It's really pretty. It's the nightshade colorway. It's a single, and it's a sport weight gradient. This, um, this yarn was a gift. From a friend of ours who moved to Oregon. A very crafty friend, although she doesn't knit yet. She's an artist. So yeah, this is my third Zuzu's Petals and I just noticed that she will give you, I think cottage industry rights to this pattern are available. I would assume you'd have to pay for them, but I, li I like that she offers that as an option because this is a great cottage industry kind of thing to, to make. I made that in a day and a half. So yeah, um, what else? Oh, I have a little, well, I'll show that later. Let me show you all this. I had some, um, some paperwork to do. I'm getting back into um, a private practice kind of setting for myself, working for myself, um, taking clients. So I had some paperwork I was procrastinating, I, yeah. So I decided to make myself a purse. So yeah, that's what you need to do when you should be doing paperwork. So I found a blog, it's called Make It, Love It, and I will link it in, in the show notes. I, it'll be the one thing I link. Make It, Love It, and this is my purse. You take an old sweater and basically cut it up and I love this thing. It's so great. It, wor it works great as like a messenger style bag. It doesn't have the flap, which I, I can't stand the messenger flap. Um, but it's sort of an over the shoulder across the body setup. And yeah, it was easy. And I made straps and they're sewn in. I'm so impressed with myself. Now the um, straps were cut from the sleeves. And this was from the bottom of the sweater. Um, just part of it cut out. So it's a great use for like recycling. And the interior, I used, um, this is fabric I got in Granada this summer. And I love this fabric. And I think it's just, it's just such a happy little purse. 
Now, I didn't have a closure, but it does, the tutorial gives you instructions for a magnetic closure. So, yeah, very, very fun purse. And I want to make another one. Super fun. So, yeah, now my other knitted FOs, let me show you this. This is my Hollows and Horcruxes cowl. This is out of my hand spun gourmet stash, uh, her unclub. And this was, oh, this is so soft, squishy and soft. And I'm going to attempt to show off the colors and the sparkle. That's about right. See the little pop of green down there? What about here? They're golds and greens and grays. It's not capturing the sparkle very well. Why doesn't it capture the sparkle? Oh, I love that part right there. Then over here, there's some teals as well. Now this is just a, a cowl in the round. 200 plus, maybe all close to 300 stitches in the round with some garter to stop and some garter to start. And I love the, um, the inside of it looks great too, which is a good thing because it definitely shows when you wrap it around twice, which is how I like to wear it. It's warm and soft and really lovely. Of course, it's hard to see with my dark shirt and this lighting, but super fun. Um, and then I have leftovers. I need a bird of happiness out of the Resurrection Stone colorway. She is. And then I have plenty left of these colors. Um, I could make another bird out of the resurrection stone, but I want to make a bird out of these, these three. So more little bluebirds of happiness on the horizon. That's it for FOs. Whips, I have very few right now, but I have more on the horizon. Um, I'm almost done with my woven scarf. It's a pink and brown houndstooth. Um, it's been interesting. I will show that off next week. Yeah, the scarf I'm finishing with is not the scarf I started with. <laughs> so, but I'm learning how to do it right now. So, yeah. And then my other work in progress is my punk rock sock. And I'm on the heel flap. This is a gourmet stash stout sock. So pretty. And uh, it's in the punk rock colorway, which is hence the name punk rock sock. And um, I'm about halfway done with the heel flap. And the heel flaps just, I have never had a problem. Like they're not, they're not a, a lot of people don't like knitting them. I'm fine knitting them. I'm like, oh, heel flap, I'll get that done in an evening. At least, you know, at, at the least, it'll take me that long. Did I say that right? At the most. So, that's it. Now, of course, I have my scrap blankets. I have my party mix sweater, which hasn't been touched in a while. So those are technically whips, but active whips, that's it. Um, so let's talk spinning, and then I'll talk to you about what's coming up. I have been doing some spinning. This just came off my wheel fast. Um, ice dyed, stellar top, driving at night. This is Kate's collaboration with Hobbledehoy, end of summer playlist collaboration. Um, this is beautiful. This is 500 yards of a two ply. And I spun it, this is not quite accurate, I spun it fast. Mostly a worsted style. Not the right color. That's a bit, of, that's more like it. Ah, the color. The light's terrible. Um, this is going to become a curl or a daybreak. Um, which I thought that if it does become a daybreak, I would pair it with this, which was from the same collaborative. This is Great Gatsby. I think these would look, when this is spun, it looks like silvers and golds. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Um, oh, and this one, yeah, I said that was great Gatsby. That's the same exact top. 
as this, as the purple stellar top. Um, and this is also ice dyed. Now, Kate says her ice dyed top, <sighs> it's the only one she doesn't guarantee um, there won't be an excess of dye when you wash it. There was no excess of dye when I washed this. And a very faint blue tinge to the water, but I was impressed. A very color fast. So my last spinning is on my Russian Spanish peacock. And this is um, this is two po two punies worth of the Guinness. Guinness is Guinness for strength. I always want to call it Guinness is good for you because that's the you know that's the old ad. Really beautiful. Fairly thin. Lovely. Very fun to spin. And I do really enjoy this Russian Spanish peacock. So, yeah, that's it for spinning. Uh, let me show you my acquisitions. Uh, Alice, I think she's sitting on them. Oh, no, here they are. All right. <clears throat> Fly Magazine came Christmas Eve. It's the worsted issue. And tell me that's not beautiful yarn. That is beautiful yarn. Now, when I have spun worsted in the past, I get an incredibly dense, almost ropey yarn. But this has inspired me to try some more. And this issue is miles above the last issue, which I was, I was not impressed with the last issue. And that was an anomaly <coughs> in the history of Fly Magazine. They've all been fabulous, in my opinion, except for the last one, which somehow missed the mark. Um, so much more could have been done with the theme, I think. And it was just, there were some articles that were just, kind of, what were they thinking? This has so much useful information in it. I've read it cover to cover already. And I am, I learn stuff. I'm inspired to try new techniques. Um, I loved the combing articles they have. There was the whole butt versus tip <laughs> um, controversy that I really enjoyed reading about. Uh, there was an article on the town in England called Worsted, where it gets its name, the technique. So very, very, very cool issue. And uh, I think these are Wensleydales or Tees Waters. It had an article on Wensleydale, Wensleydales. Um, and it made me think of, I need, to, I need to watch how I'm combing a little better. I haven't been paying attention. I have been doing my combing where I put the butt end of the lock. That's the part that, that goes over the, over the tines. And then I comb from the tips out. But I haven't been paying attention to which end I'm wrapping my nests with. And there are some articles on comparing the, the finished yarn when you spin from the, the butt of the lock versus the tip. And the butt of the lock gives you a more true worsted preparation and a smoother, shinier yarn. I, need, I think I need to make sure I do that. And especially if I'm gonna do a lace, a lace weight yarn, I wanna have that luster uh, in, a lace, in a lace yarn so I can have a shiny, lacy shawl. And I think a worsted or a semi-worsted um, uh, spin would be great for lace because you need that strength in the yarn when you block it and stretch it and really just uh, manipulate the heck out of it. And you're kind of rough with it when you block lace. So somehow I think it would have nice drape. Um, but I just need to avoid that ropiness that I was getting before. So. Somehow maybe a little, let a little bit of air in there, but still keep it smooth. So I'll develop my own little worsted-ish technique. So yay. So yay for that one. Um, now the second one I got is Curls by Hunter Hammerson. Um, and this, my next cast on will be from this book. I got the E version and then, um, I want to say brick and mortar, <laughs> the hard copy hard copy as well and I think the one I'm casting on first is this one the Icterine. Ooh. 
Oh, that doesn't give anything away. The Icterine. Isn't that gorgeous? Now these are eight stitch cables, so I don't think we'll be doing them without a cable needle. But I'm going to use some hand spun. My hand spun Corbo. Now I only have 325 yards, but I think this needs to be a cabled something. And it's a three ply. I have rarely been prouder of a hand spun yarn because it's fabulous. It's fabulous. Ah, I love it. So mm, it's from Reflections at Rocklands. And uh, I think it'll be, you know, it'll make, it will possibly be a cow-ish type of um, fabric, uh, size, but I think it'll look great with my, um, closed up with my um, penangular brooch. So this is going to get wound and cast on today. So I'm very curious to see how following these patterns are going to be because they're a bit different from what I'm used to. So very exciting. And then maybe I'll work on that tomorrow at my Space Commander party! Yay! Yes, tomorrow it's all about me. Um, I'm getting my Space Commander party and that is my fiber space local yarn store. Um, I get a party. Sparkling wine, cheese and fruit. I can invite as many people as I want. I'm inviting a masseuse I know to do seated massage for those who want to um, buy themselves a 10 or $15 massage. Because <laughs> knitters need that. I, I do at least. Oops, hang on. Sorry. It was one of my alarms. Oh, uh, never mind. We're going to hear some uh, some banjo music in a minute, quite possibly. And Alice is down here like, what? <sighs> Might have to text somebody <laughs> to come and stop that. Because I'm caged in. I don't, I don't usually podcast here. I have a table right here in this chair. Can't get out. Hear that? Roll away your stone. All right. Well, I'll try to ignore that. And hopefully it won't uh, distract us too much. So anyway, back to my fiber space party. Um, I have invited some people I've never met in person. Um, and if you are in the DC area, Saturday the 27th, I will be at fiber space from six to eight. So come say hello <laughs> if you want to. It should be fun. Why is that? You know when you add a new I uh, Apple device to your coterie of Apple devices. Sometimes they kind of link. Someone else's phone now has my my go to the bus alarm, which is um. Oh gosh, who sings this song? Roll away your stone. It starts with Mumford and Sons. Someone else's phone is playing Mumford and Sons now. So okay, my last thing is yeah, that's too loud. I'm gonna have to. Get the owner of the phone to come. Stop it. Okay, my last thing is in response to Sarah Pomegranate, um, I wanted to talk about something I have happening in February. I have a lot of it happening in February. There's the Virginia Beach Yarn Getaway. Hang on. And then there's this thing. And she wanted to know more about it. And I want to talk to you all about it. So give me one tiny second. Where's your poppy? Coming. Okay, can you go grab that phone back there that's playing music, please? And take it to your dad. I'll sing. Yeah, it don't makes the things I think. Where is it? There's your phone is playing my um my bus alarm. Oh, my phone? Somebody's phone. Oh, okay. Take it to your dad. See you in a few minutes. Okay. Okay, so this is basically the gist of this is that I am doing a fiber camp four days for high school students. I think I mentioned that um, 
45 kids wanted to sign up for this. And I'm taking seven. Um, because, yeah, they're all beginners. Um, but let me just give you a little background, and then I want to do some crowdsourcing of ideas. I'm going to tell you what is, what is happening, my ideas, and then I want to get your input. And I know Sarah is putting together a curriculum for a similar thing. Um, and I want to expose them to all sorts of, of cool things, but I don't want to overload them. I don't want to be overly ambitious. All right, so midwinter, my husband's school stops regular classes, and they do something they call an independent study week, ISW. And his idea this year was for me, basically, to do a fiber camp. And he would um, cook for the kids. And ISWs can be anything. Um, one year, I, he went to see Broadway shows. They just went to New York and saw Broadway shows. Um, my, my daughter's hopefully doing a hiking one. Um, cooking ones are very common and, you know, and kids gather in the teacher's houses. So we are having it in our house. And, um, so I have so many ideas and I've sold it. I have, as I, I advertised it, I should, I should read you what I, I advertised. It was apparently very effective. Um, I said, this is akin to the slow food movement in, it, in that it's slow, slow clothing. And have you ever heard of that? And make your own stuff. And so basically, they will learn how to knit a hat. And now I'm thinking, oh gosh, I hope I get no left-handed kids because I hear that's very difficult to teach if you are not left-handed also. So I don't know if I will, but I'm kind of crossing my fingers that I don't just because that could be problematic and I, you know, I want to be able to get these kids going. I've taught maybe three or four children to knit and it's stuck with most of them. So I feel confident that I can teach them the basics. So I'm thinking, um, cast on a, an Aran weight or a bulky yarn um, and teach them how to knit a hat. And that would be their FO they take away. Now, in the meantime, that's something they can always be doing, but I want to have them do a lot of other stuff. They're going to be dyeing a skein of yarn for their next project when they leave. I want to give them this, I want to have a set of things to give them. I think the Stitch and Bitch book is an excellent beginner book. It's like the best, in my opinion. Um, I want them to all get Ravelry accounts. Uh, I want to give them, you know, some links for podcasts they might like. Uh, I want them, to, I'm going to get some canvas bags and have them decorate their own project bags. Um, I'm going to show them the Deb Robeson, the free uh, craftsy video about fiber and understanding you know, different types of wool. We are going to go to fiber space, I believe, um, on a field trip, yarn buying field trip. We are going to visit a farm, a fiber farm, and I have several options in mind um, that I need to set up for, for February. Um, they will be doing some dyeing with Kate from Gourmet Stash. I talked about the dyeing. Um, YouTube links that they can reference. Um, but I'm just, I'm just not sure. Oh, and then I'm going to show them, they'll either be doing spindle or wheel spinning. Um, just a little bit of spinning, just to sort of get their, get their feet wet. And, uh, I have taught one teenager how to spin and she picked it up like that drop spindling and I want them to take their yarn and weave with it and then possibly um, have a group woven scarf like a soury style warp and weft and possibly auction that scarf off at the school auction um, so yeah it's four days it's a ton of stuff so they can be doing, they can be knitting their hat, they can be working on their project bag, they can be spinning, they can be weaving. Um, and I just want it to be a really relaxed atmosphere. Um, and there are a couple other things I wanted to include as well, but that's the gist of what I want them to do. And then there will be the field trips as well. And I wonder, 
if we will be able to do a podcast episode with them. That might be fun. I don't know. I'll have to get some permission. So getting pushed aside by the dog. So what do you guys think? I think that I am going to have them first knit a swatch um, that I will be already cast on just to practice the knit, the knit stitch. And then I'll show them how to purl and do some ribbing in that swatch. Because that's kind of what you need for, um, for knitting a hat. So um, once, they've, once they've swatched, at that point they can pick out their um, the yarn they want for their hat. I'll have a, a bunch of options. And the school will pay for all these supplies. I'll have a bunch of options and um, then I plan to cast on for them on circular needles, seriously, on circular needles. And uh, I don't want to have them doing the cast on until the end of the week when they're getting ready for their second hat that they're gonna knit on their own. And I'll send them away with a pattern. Um, Yeah, I just feel like the cast on so intimidating. So, cast on a swatch for them, have them learn the basics, cast on a hat for them, and have them knit in the round, knit in the round, knit in the round. They can be knitting in the car when we go on field trips. And then I'll show them how to use the double points and decrease. Then, once they have a bit more experience manipulating the yarn, holding the yarn, holding the needles, because doing all that to cast on is the first thing you're doing can be so like, ooh, I'm never gonna get this. So that's the plan. That's the order I want to go in as far as the steps of that project. What do you think? Do you think that's good? Do you have other ideas? Have you done this before and have discovered something that has worked? Let me know, please. Um, I'm very excited about it. Um, should be awesome. These kids are great kids, and I'm so thrilled that there's so much interest in this, and I'd love to do this all the time. So I might be recruiting Leanne, who you met, to help me with that first day of getting everyone cast on. Um, she was my knitting teacher, basically. Other than myself, it was Leanne. She, I learned a lot from her, so she's great. And she will be at the Fiber Space Party tonight. So as I said, let me just leave you all you know, oh, come here, baby. <sighs> Alice could come to the fiber space party, too. They allow well-behaved dogs. Alice isn't really well-behaved. <laughs> Contrary to appearances here, she's a wildcat. She always is napping when I'm podcasting. She has a new collar. Look, it has skull and crossbones on it. It's black and white, just like her. I had to pick three ticks off of her because of our, our walk in the woods today. You want to go see Ollie? No? What's that? What's that? So, I don't know when I'll podcast next. It could be sooner than my usual date because I'm sure I will have things that I want to show you guys. Because, here's the other thing, Fiber Space gives you 10% off of the whole store when you have a party there. All right, so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I might see you this year still. I might not see you till the new year, but you all take care until next time.